I want to, how many sometimes, and though you love God, how many sometimes you don't feel like praying? Just How many sometimes you don't feel like reading your word, the Bible? You know you should, but you just, some days, uh, it's okay because even Jesus didn't feel like praising one day. He was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was in such, such stress. He, he, he didn't want to praise. So it, it's nothing wrong with you. What about sometimes you don't feel like um, blessing your enemy? <laughs> yeah? See, that, that is, you are living under a world where it's 24-7 resistance to those who love God. You are under 24-7 resistance to try and resist you, to stop you from expressing your love and obedience to God. There's nothing wrong with you if you felt like there's nothing wrong with you. You are in the resistance movement. Join the resistance movement. Well, you don't have any choice. You're, part, you're in it. And the leader of the resistance movement is Jesus Christ. For Peter says, resist Satan. Submit to God, resist the enemy, and he will flee from you. He says, the enemy is seeking to devour whom he may, whom resists steadfast. And so there's this resistance that's been going on since the foundation of time. Since the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve were in the garden, loving God, serving God, and there was an enemy there to resist their love and obedience for God. We know who he was, is the serpent. And so resistance to God's to God and resistance to those who want to love and follow Jesus, it has been on the earth for twenty for, for since the Garden of Eden. All right, you're not going to escape it. That resistance to your love, the resistance against your love for God, will be with you. The resistance will be with you for twenty four seven until the day you die. The only place you're going to be free of this and is in heaven. And so I want to encourage you. In the day-to-day -day resistance that we experience as Christians, how to make it work for you, not against you. How to make it build you up, not wear you down. Because when you're daily resisted, when you, it's the attrition, the ongoing resistance, the ongoing uh, pressure that often wears God's people down. Yeah, it does. In the natural. It says... To live in the house with a nagging wife is like living under in a house with a dripping tap. Drip, 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 drip. It's not a flourishing, a torrent of water. It's the ongoing, ongoing, ongoing. Now, I'm not talking about wives here or a woman, but it's just the principle that it's little by little by little can wear you down. And every day... Christians, you and I, we are being resisted every day, 24-7. And you're never going to come to a place where you have no resistance in this lifetime. Never. So I just want to encourage you and to help you hit a reality check. If you think being a Christian is a life of ease and peace while you're in this world, get a check. Get a grip. It is not a life of ease and peace. It is a life of joy, peace, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. It is a life where God is with us, but it does not exempt us from the resistance. If it did, Jesus would never be resisted. But Jesus is our leader. And I'm going to go through this scripture, unpack it for you, hopefully encourage you that whenever you feel resistance to your faith and your love for Jesus, you will make it work for you, and you'll just dig in and just give God glory anyway. And you'll just give God praise it, and you'll read your word anyway, and you'll go to church anyway, and you will bless those who curse you anyway, that you'll do it because you love Him more than yourself. And the ones who can get through the resistance the most and use it for the good and use it to make them stronger are those who love Jesus more than they love themselves. And when I love myself more than Jesus, I'm on team norm. But when I love Jesus more than norm, I'm on team Jesus. And every now and again, I slip over to this team. But I just want to encourage you how I've found, stay under Team Jesus. And to stay there, you have to love Him more than yourself. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? When are the times you feel down, depressed, that God has deserted you? Because God never deserts you when you're on Team Self. When everything is about you. Oh, I don't feel like this. 
It's all about I. Oh, why would they say that about me? Nobody cares about me. Yeah, that's when I is on self. But when you get your eyes back on Jesus, though nobody cares, may seem no one cares about me, Jesus does. And even if they don't, I love him more than how I feel. Are you hearing me? This is a place of lordship that we're meant to live in all the time. The place of lordship is a place of safety from getting depressed and, and despair and discouragement. And if we get out of that place, and it's about us, how people treat us, how society treats us, how things are so hard. Oh, you're down the gurgler. <laughs> but if you understand there's resistance, you're not special. <laughs> Tell the person next to you, you're not special. I am being resist. No, no, sorry, sorry. In this context, in this context of being resisted, you're not special. We all are being resisted, okay? We're all being resisted. Our faith and our love for Jesus is always being resisted. So I'm not special and you're not special. Some people have said to me, oh, the devil's after me because I've decided to go the right, the way of the Lord. I said, oh, you think the devil's got... God hasn't got bigger things to take care of than you, and you've decided to follow Jesus. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say the devil's after me because I've decided to, to go full on for Jesus. He's got bigger fish to fry than me. He rules nations, empires. He's out to kill millions. And no, little Norman Clown says in Gisborne that he's going to give Jesus more. Oh, okay, devil's going to fly over there. No, nah, I don't think so. You're under resistance 24-7. It's Anyway, so under the heavens, if you looked up in the sky, you'd see all these principalities, powers, and evil spirits. That's the atmosphere we were born into. And that's the atmosphere we will die into until, unless we get raptured. So that's over us. That's normal. It's called resistance. So, but every now and again, God opens a portal of His glory, of His presence. Where, like when we were worshiping, you felt the presence of God. Or, Whoa! And it's through our lives. We can open portals all throughout times. And especially when the resistance comes, when it's a sacrifice, that's an opportunity to open a portal of glory. It's not an opportunity, oh, woe is me, have a self-pity party. And where's God? I've been there. But it's to learn to grow up, eh? To grow, not just to grow, but to grow up. To grow up. To grow up, you hear me? Not to grow inward, but to grow up. For me, I've had to grow up and look, lift my eyes to Him. Say, thank you, Jesus. Though the fig tree doesn't blossom, and there is no fruit on the vine, and the olives fail, yet by Your grace, I will rejoice in You. Because I know all things work together for good in the end. I just got to keep keep on Jesus. Okay, so I want to encourage you in your resistance, Fano, in the sufferings that you go through. That resistance is an opportunity to go against the flow, resist not wanting to pray, resist not wanting to worship, resist not wanting to read your word, resist not wanting to love people like Jesus loves them, and just do it anyway. Because when you do that, you open up a portal of God's glory. God's presence will be upon you. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, can we put number three uh, PowerPoint up, please? Jen. Yeah, there we go. So that's what's over the earth. It was over the earth from before God created man. The earth was in darkness and chaos. God created uh, mankind on this earth. The earth is still covered with darkness and chaos. It's going to get tied up and thrown under the pit of the earth when Jesus returns. And that won't be over the earth. It will be glory as far as the, that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. But that time's not yet. So when you were born, you were born under that atmosphere of resistance to God and resistance of those who love God. Everyone who's loved God over the thousands of years has been, their faith and their love for God has been resisted. Remember, even the great kings, King David, Joshua, Moses, Samson, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, resisted, 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 Esther, Deborah, <coughs> Elijah, 
Elisha, the prophets, every one of them has been resisted. But you saw the end result, that they hung in there, gave glory to God. We are in a world of resistance, and it's absolutely normal. There's nothing wrong with you. The world, there's something wrong with this world. Okay? And so, okay, is this good? This will help you. So I want to encourage you to use your day-to-day resistance for God's glory. Would you repeat after me? I will use my day-to-day resistance for the glory of God. I will use my day-to-day resistance for the glory of God. One more time. I will use my day-to-day resistance for the glory of God. So I've already done that. Who hasn't feel, feel like praying sometimes? Nothing wrong with you. Nothing wrong with you. If you said, yes, that's me, some, nothing wrong with you. Uh, let me uh, share with you what Jesus went through. Number four, please. Number four, PowerPoint. Okay. So remember, Jesus goes into the wilderness after, after he's baptized in the Holy Spirit. He's filled with the Holy Spirit. He goes into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights to, to be what? Why does he go in there? To be tempted. To be resisted. You with me? He is our resistance leader from the start. Jesus is the leader of the resistance. Yo! I think that's cool. He's the leader of the resistance movement. <laughs> He's the leader. So if we follow the leader, he goes into the wilderness. Let's read these scriptures. Then Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be... So Jesus faced resistance. He came to do the will of God the Father. Jesus is pure. He's perfect. He's not like us who have sinned. He's never sinned. But still, though he's never sinned, he's resisted. Some of you think, if I can only be pure enough, if I can only be holy enough, if I can only get over this habit, this, if I can only stop thinking bitter thoughts or give up cigarettes, or if I I can only do this, you think you're going to be free. You think, well, life's going to be much easier. I've got good news and bad news. I give you the bad news. It's not going to make any difference when you give that up and you, you come closer to God. It's not going to make any difference to the resistance against you. But the good news is it will glorify God. It will glorify God. So that was Jesus at the start of his ministry. Now let's look at Jesus at the end of his ministry. Bottom scripture. Now when the devil, uh, Nick, no, thank you. Now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. So the end of his 40 days and 40 nights, notice the devil left. The de- he, outwore the, he wore the devil out. Don't let the devil wear you out. You wear him out. Why? Stay, follow the resistant leader. Resist these things. Next one, please. So this is part of my ministry, your ministry. Nick, thank you. Join the resistant movement. This is off Star Wars, I think. I don't know. I just found it. I thought, hey, that looks cool. (laughs) Join the resistance. He fights for freedom. Will you? (laughs) Uh, Okay, so let's read this. This is what Peter, James says about us. Let's read it together. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil. And he will, Peter says, be sober, be vigilant, because, let's read it together. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. That's what I mean, that you're not special to, to anyone else as far as the resistance. It's going through the whole world. Every one of God's people are being resisted. Their love and their obedience to God is being resisted. It is totally normal. There'll be days you wake up and you feel, wow, I'm just ready to roll with the Lord. And days you'll wake up and say, no, I'm not so ready. It's called resistance. And so you use the days when you don't feel like you're ready to work for you. And so even though I don't feel like it, I'm going to, because I love you more than me. And I'm going to, because it brings glory to Jesus. And if it brings glory to Jesus, guess what? A portal opens up over your life. A portal of glory. I'm I'm telling you, there's a scripture that says when we go through suffering, 
that the, it's a, it signifies the Spirit of God and glory is on you. I'm going to get to that scripture soon. When you go through suffering for Jesus, I mean, if you go through suffering because you went through a red light on purpose, if you go through suffering because you, you, know, you, you decided not to pay your tax, or you go through suffering because you stole or lied, okay, that, that's different. But if you go through suffering for doing what is right for Jesus, for doing what is right for people, and you suffer for it, it says the Spirit of God and glory is resting on you. So it's a portal of suffering. I didn't want to name it that because it sounds too sort of negative. But there's a portal that opens up, of a, port, when, a suffering portal, that when you suffer for doing right, it opens up a heaven of the heavens of God's glory over you. Mm. We want the portal of praise, the portal of prayer, <clears throat> the portal of worship, but there's also a portal of suffering. You've you got to have salt on your, on your beat. Okay, you can't just have sugar. Life is not just about sugar-coated stuff. Okay. Are you part of the resistance? Who's part of the resistance? All right. We are part of millions and millions and millions over the centuries have been part of the resistance against this world's ways. Okay, next one, please. What are the purposes of resistance? Well, when you go to the gym in the natural, you've you got to have weights it's your resistance against those heavy weights that grows your muscles and gives you strength and those guns. And when you have that strength, you can, you can carry more. Yeah, but it takes resistance to grow muscles to give you strength. Does, do you think God wants you and me as spiritual beings to be strong or weak? Okay, Joshua 1.9 says, have I not commanded you? It's a command. Be strong. It's a song. Be strong. Be courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. So God says, be strong. So how do you get strong spiritually? The same way. Resistance training. Resistance training. And so God allows trials and tests to come my way, your way, and that we have to learn to resist doing what we want to do. Resist not praying, resist not following the ways of Jesus. We resist that and we just do it anyway. That makes you strong. It gives you spiritual muscle. It gives you spiritual strength. How many have been through two or three trials or tests in their walk with Jesus over the years you've walked them? Hey, guess what way? Okay. And it's either made you stronger or weaker. It's either made you stronger or weaker. If, if, you, if I withdraw into myself, I become weaker. I think, oh, gee, I don't have to, oh, I don't want that again. But if I yield to Jesus through that resistance, it makes us stronger, yeah? You're stronger for it. Now you have a testimony to share with somebody else who's going through a test, who's going through resistance. Because you have broken through you made a sacrifice and you've done it for Jesus. Now you can help somebody else break through when they go through the same resistance that you've been through. You're now a leader. You don't have to have a title, but you can now lead somebody in the resistance. You can't do that if you give in. So don't give in. Don't give up. Move on. Move on. You were born for this, Father. You've got a warrior spirit. You're a warrior people. His spirit in you is a warrior spirit. Spirit of God doesn't bow down to anybody or anything. Spirit of God is eternal. But my soul, our soul, it's, it's flipping bizarre. It's, it's double-minded. It's crazy. Your soul. And if, you, if I yield my soul to the spirit, it's all good. But if I yield my soul to my environment, to the resistance, to negativity, then it's all bad. So it's about being led with the Spirit. It's moving on now. Moving on. <clears throat> Next one, please. Okay, so Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane. Interesting, eh? He's, he's in the, the start of his ministry. He's in the desert. He's going through resistance or suffering. But he sucks it up for God. And Satan leaves him. And then what happens? Let's read what happens. Uh, 
let's read it. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. That's after his resistance in the desert. What I'm trying to show is when we resist the enemy, when we are willing to suffer for God, guess what? Angels come. It opened up a portal. Can you see that? It's a portal, type of portal. Angels came. And then on his last days of his ministry on earth, he's in the Garden of Gethsemane praying, if this cup is possible, Lord, let this cup pass from me. But let's just read his words, his final words, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. See, he said, not my will, but yours. This is the crux of the whole thing. To get through the resistance, not my will, but yours. Uh, see, Jesus loved the Father's will more than himself. You, you with me? Are you hearing this? Do you love the Father's will more than yourself when you're going through resistance? Have you learned to love his will more than you when you're going through pain? When you feel misunderstood or you feel entitled that somebody needs to listen to you or you feel entitled that somebody should have done something better <laughs> and, and you see or you're like Jesus maybe you are entitled maybe you were entitled maybe you're in the right but somebody did you wrong it's that song done some someone done me wrong song <laughs> maybe you were right and you suffered for doing what was right and you might feel entitled about that and well I'm going to make a stand ah Jesus didn't he submitted himself to a faithful creator and he suffered and it says so also are you called to suffer for him so th this is not even a high level of following Jesus, this is just normal Christianity. This is just normal, this is being a normal Christian. That God, we love Him with all our soul, with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. But when we resist, and when we suffer for it, God sees it. Let Him be your lawyer. <laughs> Let Him justify you on, and leave it to Him and do it for Him. Because a portal opens up and angels or the Spirit of God will come and minister into the midst of your situation. If you fight for yourself, the Lord will stand by and allow you to try and work it out yourself. But if you entrust to Him the battle is the Lord's, then the Lord will intervene and work on your behalf. Did you hear that? If you try to justify yourself or fight for yourself in an unjust situation, sometimes... There's a time to say something sometimes. Like I'm not saying just be a doormat, let everybody walk all over you. But in generally, sometimes, if you fight, for, if I've fought for myself sometimes, try to make a stand, I don't deserve this. <laughs> I don't deserve this. <laughs> and Jesus didn't deserve to be crucified to a piece of wood either. He didn't deserve to be murdered by people who came to help. He didn't, and that's what gets me. He said, neither did I deserve this. Who am I following? Me or you? Off team self, back onto team Jesus. Stay on team Jesus. Stay on team Jesus. Eventually you'll get over the double-mindedness. Eventually you'll get through the double-mindedness. Yeah, it's a process. It's not an event. You're not just going to get there one day and say, finally I've made it. Well, guess what? Number eight, please. So by suffering, I'm not talking necessarily about deep, deep trauma and tragedy, but it can involve that. But I'm talking about the suffering of the day-to-day -day resistance. It's a type of suffering. It's a type of sacrifice. Every day it's a type of sacrifice. Some days are good, eh? Some days it's like, whoo, God is with me. But <laughs> when things aren't working out your way, often we think, God, where are you? Don't we? Come on. Be truthful, don't we? Sometimes when things aren't happening the way we want them to happen, when we want them to happen, we think, God's not with me. Well, where did he go? Is he taking a day off? Has he forgotten about you? He said, I will never leave you or forsake you. It's through those times when we think God's not with us. He is with us. It's, time, it's those times when we grow up. 
when we grow up and we look up, say, well, God, I know you're with me, even though I might feel like crap today. But you're with me, and regardless, I'm still going to love you because I'm going to resist the urge to get self-pity. I'm going to resist the urge to make this all about me. You're gonna, I'm going to resist the urge to blame people. I'm going to resist the urge and take personal responsibility to say, regardless, I still love you, Jesus. That's, hmm. Okay, okay, if you've got your Bible, I haven't got it written up there, but if you'd like to turn to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. So Peter says this, Beloved, do not think it strange or strange concerning the fiery trial which is to test you as though some strange thing is happening to you. So a bit of context what, what Peter's saying. Peter the apostle, remember Peter the apostle, the fisherman? Peter was close to God, but Peter was up and down. He, he loved God. He was on team Jesus some days, and some days he's on team Peter. Yeah? One day he's on team Jesus, and Jesus says, who do men say I am? He says, you're the, the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus compliments and well done. You know, flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to you, but my Father from heaven. So you can have an open heaven revelation and feel real close to God. Next minute, Jesus says, I'm going up to Jerusalem to be crucified. Peter says, oh no, Lord, you mustn't. Out of the same mouth that Jesus just blessed Peter, Jesus turns around and says, get behind me, Satan. You're not on the side of man, but the side, the side of God, but the side of man. Oh, so Peter's up there one minute, next minute, boom, he's on Team Peter. Because Peter suddenly went from Team Jesus to Team Self-Preservation. You can't go up to Jerusalem and get killed. If you get killed, what's going to happen to us? That's what he's thinking. So this is what Peter's saying. Don't think it strange, the fiery trial. That's the context where Peter's talking about. He knows about the process of these trials of resistance. And then remember when Jesus got taken by Herod's guards? Just prior to that, Peter says to Jesus, others will leave you. The, the, the other boys will leave you. The other 11, they'll leave you, but not me. I will remain. I will even go to prison for you. And then Peter says, I'll even die for you. And Jesus says to Peter, before the rooster crows three times, before the rooster crows tonight, you will deny me three times, Peter. What? Next minute, Peter denies Jesus three times. See? Peter is in a resistance movement. And it didn't just all come at once where suddenly he's full on for God. He's up and down. He's up and down. <clears throat> but Peter, he broke through. And he became one of the greatest apostles that lived on the earth. Yeah? So, let's, so, so in that context, this is why Peter's saying to you, do not think it's strange concerning the fiery trial which is to test you. So something strange is happening. Have you ever felt that? Like you so loved God and the next minute you're flipping manifesting like the devil? Is it just me? Have you had that? You're so spiritual one moment. You're having a great touch or encounter or prophecy over your life. And you go home and you're having a big stand-up argument with your husband or your wife or your kids. Anyone? Or your neighbor. Like, what the heck is happening to me? Not Pastor Lance, of course. He's always having resistance. <laughs> yeah. So it's normal. There's nothing wrong with you. It's resistance. It's just normal. Just learn to grow up. Focus, say, Lord, this sucks, this stinks. I'm sorry, I repent. And I just give my life back to you. And I'm going to go through this with a smile on my dial. So Peter goes on to say that if you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, the spirits, for the spirit of glory and of God is resting upon you. So he's saying, when you're going through this suffering, the spirit of God and glory, there's a portal of suffering that allows God's spirit of glory to rest upon you. And you can avoid the suffering and try to defend ourselves. And who wins? You might win the argument. <laughs> you might win the argument of entitlement. But you lose something in God. You lose strength. You lose spiritual muscle and kaha. But if you give up, get off team Peter, get off team self, say, Lord, I... On to, um, give you glory in the midst of it the spirit of God and glory opens up over you you become a better person you become a stronger person okay 
Paul's. This being part of the resistance, this is not to qualify you whether you get to heaven or not. I, I'm not talking about living a life to earn your way into heaven, okay? I'm not talking about that. Heaven is a free gift of God. Eternal life is a free gift given to you by Jesus Christ. By grace we are saved through faith, and that not of ourselves, it is a gift of God, not of our works, lest we should boast. Heaven is given as a gift. I'm not talking about trying to earn your way into heaven. So if you're sitting there thinking, heck, I've, I've got to resist God all the time if I'm going to get into heaven. I've got to resist the devil all the time. Rather, if I, get in, if I want to get into heaven, I've got to resist the devil. I've got to resist myself, my flesh, for God to love me. No, no, you got it wrong. God loves you regardless. Whether you resist or don't resist, He who loved you before you loved Him, okay? This is not about living a life that gets you into heaven. Your life and my life will never be good enough to get into heaven. The only reason we get into heaven is because His life is good enough on our behalf, and He took our sins on our behalf. He made us good enough by putting His righteousness on it. The only reason we're going to heaven is because of Him and Him alone. But to live a life of resistance is to break, live a life that glorifies God. I'm sure we all want to live that sort of life. When I go to heaven, I, I was just happy to get to heaven. When I first got saved, I thought, man, I'm just happy to get in. That's enough for me, Lord. But I want to do more than just get into heaven. I want to bring a koha into heaven. When you go visit a marae, you bring a koha. Eh? You, you take something on. For the hospitality that they're showing you, you always give something in return. So when I go to heaven, I'm not going to pay for get to heaven because he's already paid it. But I want to bring a, I want to bring a koha. I want to bring something to God that will glorify him. So here, something, a gift for you, Lord. And that gift is every time I've resisted the enemy, that's God's recorded that. It's a koha to him. It brings him glory, not me. It brings him glory. So at the end of my days, at the end of our days, imagine saying, Lord, here's the koha. I did the best I could. It's for your glory. He says, far, well done. And you get rewards for that, but I don't do it for the rewards. I do it just because it will glorify our God. That's the reason. If you can keep that mentality, fall more in love with Jesus than with self, you'll go a long way. So coming to a close. Resistance is suffering. It's sacrifice. But suffering and sacrifice, you are not going to be able to do this in heaven. When you go to heaven, you cannot suffer. You're not going to suffer. Heaven, is there a devil in heaven? Are there demons to resist your faith in heaven? Is there curses in heaven? Uh, will you still have your nasty flesh in heaven? Now you'll be perfect. There'd be nothing in heaven to resist your love and your faith for Jesus. Nothing. No resistance. Let that sink into you. Do you hear me? The only time that you will suffer for following Jesus is here in this life. Listen to me. Because you don't know when you're going to pass from this world. But the only time you can bring God a sacrifice of praise yeah, you can praise Him in heaven, worship Him in heaven, serve Him in heaven, but it's not going to be a sacrifice. It's not going to cost you anything because it's a perfect environment. There's no resistance in heaven. But where you're sitting in your seat right now, you're living in a world of resistance. When you walk out of this church right now, or shortly, you're going to come across situations and circumstances of resistance to your faith. And that is your once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to use the sacrifice for the glory of God. Listen, listen, listen. It's about him, not you. If, if I can get everybody thinking, not like I want, but like he wants, that we live for his glory. We live for something. This is radical teaching. This ain't radical. This is just being normal. Living for his glory. Live and put up with the stuff. Put up with the crap. Put up with the suffering. Put up with the injustice. Put up with and giving away your entitlement. Just put up with it for the glory of Jesus because it pleases him. Last year's word was, uh, this year's WWJD, um, what would Jesus do? Last year was, whatsoever you do in word or deed, do as unto the Lord, not unto the man. Knowing from the Lord you will receive the reward. It's just to carry on. So you're not going to have to, you, you cannot give a sacrifice to God when you're in heaven. You can only do it on the earth. 
when you leave this world, when you pass, when you die, you go into heaven, you can never bring God a sacrifice ever again for the rest of eternity. Eternity is longer than this lifetime. This lifetime is only a few years. Eternity has no end. So this little short lifetime, make your, but Paul says, make, uh, let these light afflictions work for you. Establishing an eternal weight of glory. You will never be able to give Jesus a sacrifice in heaven. So the sacrifice you give to him here is like a koha when you go to heaven. Oh, I wish, please, oh God, help us catch this. Help us because this will revolutionize suffer, help when you go through suffering. It will revolutionize you when you go through hardship. This will keep you from spitting the dummy because he is sweeter than wine. He is more precious than silver. He is more costly than gold. It's easy to sing it on church when everything, the environment's great. But it's when you're out there in the workplace or you're out there facing resistance. It's easy to give up then. That's when you give God the glory. So in closing, there are words that have been spoken over people in this room. Words of curses. Words to resist your love and your faith for God. <clears throat> Negative words have been spoken over you. And you have helped those words because you entertain them from time to time. And you allow the memories of those words to continue to go over in your brain and you agree with those negative words that you're not good enough or the past, the condemnation or the accusations keep coming to you. And you agree with them. So you're empowering those words. But God's got words too. Heaven and earth will pass away. The sons of dust, their words will pass away. But the sons of dust have spoken words over you. Humans. And their words will fall to the dust as, they, as our bodies will go to the dust. But the Son of God has spoken words. He said, my word will never pass away. And His word over you is for good, not evil, to give you a hope and a future. His word over you, you're His beloved son or daughter, that He will never leave, never, never, never. His word over you, you don't have a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. His word over you says you can do all things through Him who strengthens you. His word over you says he, greater is He in you than He is in the world. That's the word of truth that never pass away. And that's what's meant to define us and shape who we are. What His word says. Not what the words of accusation, the past, condemnation say. And I feel the Holy Ghost said there are people here and you, are, you have empowered these words of negativity. And this morning the Holy Ghost wants to break them off you. But you have to come in agreement with the Holy Spirit now and not with your negativity, not with who, what somebody said about you or who somebody said you were or what even the devil said. Forget that. There's a threefold court. The third the third court, the third person, and the threefold court is Jesus. There's you, there's me, and there's Jesus this morning. And we're going to come into agreement of casting down those words that are not God's words for you. God's written a book about you, and all His words are in your book. He's the author and the finisher of your book. And His words, the words that you're thinking are not the words He's put in your book about you. You're going to cast those words down. And you've got to align yourself back with the Word of God. Yeah? So what we're going to do now, if you just stand, please. I'm going to lead you all into this. Can I just lead you in this prayer? Lord Jesus Christ, heaven and earth passes, but your words never pass. Words have power to bless or curse. Your words bless. Your words are life and health to all my flesh, peace to my soul and my heart. Lord Jesus, I bring before you the words, negativity, curse words, words of defeat and failure, words that are connected to my past, that used to be who I was. It is not who I am in you, Lord. And I have empowered some of those words by coming into agreement with the words of the enemy. The words of my flesh. The words of self-pity. Selfishness. Please forgive me help me now free myself 
upon those words that have bound me to Team Self and help me cling to your words. Keep me cling, clinging to Team Jesus. The threefold cord, the power of agreement. It's me, it's a pastor, and it's Jesus. The threefold cord is not easily broken. I come into agreement. Jesus and the words of Jesus over my life right now. I renounce every curse, every negative, critical, judgmental accusation brought against me even if it's true it is not your words that you have written of my life in the book so I rebuke the power of those words that I have empowered by believing and yielding to and I say no weapon no word formed against me shall prosper from this day on. I cast these words to the dust where they belong, powerless in the name of Jesus. And I clothe myself with the Word of God, the greater are you within me. I do not have a spirit of fear. I have a spirit of power. I have a spirit of love. I have a spirit of a sound mind. I'm strong. I'm full of courage. I'm not afraid. I'm the head, not the tail. I'm above, not beneath. I'm blessed. I'm blessed when I walk out of this church. I'm blessed when I walk in it. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed. The favor of God is on me. I'm a resistant fighter. I'm part of the resistance movement. And Jesus, you are my leader. I have overcome every resistance in advance through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Now I want you to put your hands on your stomach, please. Now I'm just going to speak. I'm going to pray. You don't need to pray this. Now I command every spirit, every afflicting spirit, every evil spirit, every curse that's in anybody in this room. In the name of Jesus, you leave. Hariatu once. Hariatu two times. Hariatu three times. Or he could I Leave in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, now. Now, I just want you to take a deep breath and breathe out, please. In and out. Take another one in the name of the Father. And another one in the name of the Son. Another one in the name of the Holy Ghost. I say, be filled with the Holy Spirit. If you've never given your life to Jesus and you want to do that now, or if you're backslidden and you want to come back, just raise both hands. 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 Ra okay. Just say these words. Jesus, I receive you as Lord, not just Savior. As my boss, not just my Redeemer. As the one I love more than myself, I receive you back into my heart. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you, Father. I hope you enjoyed that. God bless you. Resistant fighters.